Greetings everyone, this is one of the ones, and I wanted to talk to you today Look it up on YouTube, you might uh, look under the title of Apocalyptic Sounds Being Heard Around the World And um, these sounds are being reported by people, they're saying that they're being heard coming from the heavens over multiple cities around the globe and that the sounds uh, sound something like um, from some people's description like some of the noises that we heard off of that movie War of the Worlds with the aliens you know, believe it or not and uh, I heard it, it does sound somewhat like that and then some people are liking it to uh, trumpets and uh, it's definitely a real mystery um, but what is interesting is that it happens to somewhat fit, um, not really somewhat, perfectly fit into the timeline of uh, prophecy, at least concerning Revelation in the Bible. Alright, so what I want to do is, first off, I want to read a poem that is somewhat relevant what we're about to talk, and it is uh, from a man named Chester Lester, and it's entitled, Going by the Book. You can see it in the movies, in the paper, in the TV news. Somebody's army is always on the move. There's going to be a battle. The lines have been drawn. They've got guns and tanks and planes. And the wells have gone dry and the water is bad. And the air is acid rain. There's war after war and rumors of war from the east. There's a rumbling in the ground and they're talking about the beast. Good mothers cry because the rivers run high with the blood of too many sons. Some people say peace is on the way, but the worst is still to come. Because the prophets wrote about it, and Jesus spoke about it, and John got to take a look. And he told us what he saw, and it's easy to see. It's going by the book. There's armies in the cities, and the missiles stand ready for flying. A pale horse rides like the wind across the night, and the rumbling in the desert like thunder getting closer are the trumpets getting ready to blow. There's going to be a shout that will wake the dead, and we'd better be ready to go. All right, so um, where I'm at here is uh, in Revelation, and we're going to start off talking about these seals real fast. So from Revelation chapter 6, look for the first seals, the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth seal. All of those seals that have taken place are conditions that have that have already happened, but yet we're still living through the repercussions of those conditions. And like for instance the fourth seal, which is death, well of course, you know, we're still living throughout those conditions of this uh, this death that is covering our globe and I would like to call your attention to maybe Somalia with, you know, 12 million people just right there that are currently dying, not including everywhere else where people are experiencing this. So those are conditions that we're still existing within, these seals. So while these conditions in time are being set by the seals, the fifth seal is something that is taking place in a, in a supernatural element. It's not something that we deal with here in the physical and it is basically the martyred remnant and it's what I like to call the waiting of the saints and uh, I'll read one verse which kind of describes that it says and white robes were given unto every one of them and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled so this is the wait of the saints until the rest of the prophecy is fulfilled um, for them to get their reward and at least the judge up until this point or at least the dead up until this point are being judged. So focus your attention now on the sixth seal. Okay, The sixth seal, basically the, the title or the heading for this thing is Anarchy. And I'm going to read the sixth seal off for you here. And when, when I read the sixth seal, I want you to keep in mind, if any of you know anything about the Elnin, or the twelfth planet, or Nibiru, um, or the dwarf star, keep this in mind. It has everything to do with the passage of this celestial object. 
And I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that setteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now remember the common Elnan, if you know, the El is a prefix for deity. So when we're given this comment, this prefix for deity, and then in relation to the events that it could cause on this planet, very interesting, very interesting. So what I want to say to you is that the sixth seal is a condensed summary of a, of a timeline of events that we are about to pass through, of which this first trump is, is after the earthquake from the first trump. You'll see that if you read about the first trump, there's an earthquake that happens before the first trumpet. And then if you see in the sixth seal anarchy, as I told you, it's a condensed version. It also starts with the great earthquake. After the great earthquake, then the sun becomes black. Well, that's going to be as a result of this thing coming in, it's asteroids, meteors, or comets, or either the volcanic eruptions that it's going to cause, or even its own debris field is going to begin to block out the sun. And that is what you can begin to see when you start going back here to these trumpets. So, just keep in mind that the sixth seal is a condensed version of of the timeline of the passage of this dwarf star and it's complete with even the men you know the kings of the earth all right think the the, the leaders the world leaders and then we've got the great men well that could be their chief advisors their scientists their chief philosophers and then we have the next in line which would be the rich men uh, the Rockefellers the the Bilderbergers of the world and then we've got the chief captains well that would be the military captains and then we've got the mighty men which would be the soldiers and then we've got the reserved of the elect every bondman and free man whoever they have allowed to come in with them into these dens and into these rocks of these mountains but as you can see, it's, it's, it's a sketchy thing for anybody that's going into the planet right here. Because they also say, And they said unto the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from him, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? The great day of the wrath of this L, this prefix for deity which this comet is carrying, which behind the comet is the dwarf star. The comet is not the dwarf star. Behind it is the dwarf star. So we are beginning the first trump, possibly, with what we just heard, which is about to give us the description. If you read the trumpets, all the way from trumpet 1 through 6 is descriptive in every detail of what we're about to go through, and even this supposed alien invasion. But the Bible reveals that they're not aliens, that they actually come from the inner earth. I'm going to stop right here, and I will start with another video. I thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.